We definitely say blessed love to each and every one. We give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first. Of course, the honorable presides are here with you. And of course, you are in the tiger's nest with me. I definitely said I wanted to touch upon this subject area, which is really just a, a short bit of a lengthier subject area that we will be going into on our nightly radio program, recorded, broadcasted program, which is the shock of the hour. And of course, I always make sure I remind you, if you're not a subscriber to the shock of the hour nightly program, all you have to do is email us, priestisaac27 at gmail.com. And we give you more information as it re relates to becoming a part of the subscription team. Whereas now you will get the program every evening or at least by the morning after the program has been recorded. Remember the shock of the hour radio program is a program that comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And as I said, for those who are part of the subscription team, you definitely get a copy of the shock of the hour program email straight to your inbox and you get it every day and all you have to do is contact us we have a monthly subscription we have a six month subscription which of course would save you and then we also have a yearly subscription and you know what the shock of the hour is all about it's basically what you see here man it's information inspiration higher education to 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 a next level so, you know, it'll be good that you become a part of the shock of the hour. I'd like to highlight here as well our upcoming African History Month Priest Isaac's essay competition. Now, this is something that we do every year. And this is the sixth, the sixth year now that we have been hosting this essay competition right here in Antigua and Barbuda. Now, this is not really the program dedicated to it. In fact, in a, in a very um, short, in very short order, I'll be doing a program directly dedicated or dedicated to explaining in very, you know, very detailed explanation exactly what it is we are doing for the African History Month every February. And this year is no exception, as I said, we have our essay competition every year and it's really it caters for children between the 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 age of uh, 7 and 17 from the age of 7 to the age of 17 and in between that bracket there we divide that into three sections so you have the senior youth the intermediate intermediate pardon me, um, youth and you have the um, the juniors so that's three sections and what we do every year, we get three, uh, for the three sections, we have a first prize, second prize, and a third prize. And the essay itself is always the same. What does African history slash heritage mean to me? That's always the, the, the title of the essay. It never changes. And each group, depending on what group you're in, from 100 words uh, to 200 words to 300 words, depending on the age. And the winner would get, obviously, the prize that's associated with. So as February is just at hand, and as I said, the, the African History Month actually itself being February, many people like to jump and argue about, well, you know, African History Month, February is the shortest month. I don't want to deal with that right now. When we when we take time to speak about the essay competition in more detail, we will speak about that aspect of it. Some people are in such a state that even if, I mean, African History Month, shortest month, you could say what you want, give thanks for Carter G. Woodson. But whatever the case is, as I always say, when I was uh, a young lad, you never heard nothing about no African History Month, but for whatever reason, whether it be a fad, whether it be just for entertainment, whatever, the schools and some of the institutions are supposedly celebrating this African History Month now. Each of the schools around here have an African History Month program. So what am I going to do? Bum rush them and say, oh, that's just the shortest month. These are people that have nothing to say about Africa. You know? Nothing at all. Africa is totally out of the curriculum, out of the idea. 
So if they are following a quote unquote American culture and celebrating African History Month, well, at least I see that strategically as an avenue to get in. Remember our children in a man. This is the main reason and as i said when we do that program i'll go deeper into that this is the main reason why we do this this is the main reason why we do this. this obviously is not for profit in fact in fact every year every one of the six years we definitely if you want to say go into deficit to do this but we we, we don't want to refer to it as that because it's a joy and this is why we um, reach out to those who are concerned, stakeholders, those who have some sort of love for the children in our society, who consider that, oh, the children are going astray and they need moral this and moral that. Well, what they need is to know who they are. You understand, that is what they need. As I always say, if you teach a caterpillar that it is a worm, it will definitely behave like a worm. Yes, the worm and the caterpillar looks alike from a distance, to the untrained eye but they're two different things worms don't grow wings worms don't don't spin that wonderful silky cocoon and fly away no they don't caterpillars do that you understand and we are caterpillars so when you rob us from our african heritage you refuse to put it in the school system and bring people who know and have some understanding of what's going on to teach the children but yet still you force you force the colonializers' history down our throats. Obviously, we're going to act like worms because we have no idea that we are butterflies. We have no idea that we're supposed to be sucking the nectar from the flower. You understand? So an African History Month essay competition is designed to, to encourage children to do some level of research as it relates to their African heritage and history. Wherein otherwise than this, they wouldn't have no, nothing at all would encourage them to do that, you know. But because of this now, whether they win, lose or draw, they have at least made some attempt to learn who they are from an African perspective, you know. So as I said, we, we've already acquired even the first prize officially. And the first prize would be an Acer Spin 1 laptop. So I'm just letting everyone see as well. This is the first prize for the senior section. This is the first prize for the senior section. And that's an Acer um, uh, Spin 1 laptop. This is specifically the first prize for the senior section this was donated to us by brother mike duong brother mike duong in the united states we like to give thanks to the brother for the donation of that as well we also have a first prize which is coming in as well for the um, intermediate first prize for the intermediate which will be a tablet that's the first prize for the intermediate as well and um, as i said usually we go for first second and third prize prizes as well and um, the whole essay competition around it the whole month they're given the month to to prepare themselves and at the end of the month they bring in their uh, the essay um, or before that whenever they're finished depending on the group and the 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 amount of words and it is really it is really for the the island really the the nation of antigua and barbuda it is something we like to do internationally but obviously you gotta start somewhere and this is where we have started and as i said what that does it sparks the children to at least look look into their afrocentricity and this is why we reach out to our community right here in antigua you know we reach out trust me we reach out you know, as I said, give thanks to Brother Mike Duang um, over the seas. Also, Brother David um, 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 Queen Arnez, also who um, contributed, uh, I think, $300. He contributed towards the effort as well. And uh, But these are individuals overseas. And even right here at home, we have to also give thanks to um, um, Chuka's trucking. I have his his logo right here but I'll, I'll, I'll bring that and show you that brother brother Damon Lewis from Chuka's Trucking right here in Antigua we give thanks to him brother Luke 
you know, from healthy living, we got to give thanks for him as well. And um, these are those who have contributed thus far. Uh, Brother, Sister Jacqueline Thomas from Villas at Sunset, um, at Sunset Lane as well. We give thanks for her contribution. So as I said, you know, some of you out there, we've already sent you the the letter of proposal because we had a so-called deadline they call it deadline but we ain't killing no we had a a, a a cutoff point of the 20th of december 2019 which would have been for those who wanted to contribute and as we said once you contribute just like what you see us do here we make the world know that this individual has contributed to the essay competition and what they have contributed as well. And um, as I said, the, 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 the competition itself goes beyond the competition. We have prize giving ceremonies where the dignitaries are invited. You got to invite them. These are the ones that are running the community, you know. These are one that, the ones that are calling the shots as such. These are the ones that, that have the education of the children in their hands. So you have to show them, well, listen, man, we're making an effort to bring Africa into the picture. And the fact that you see that there's some interest in it, you yourself should take part in it, you know. So for those who would like to be a part of it in the sense of contributing to it, whatever it may be, um, as you could see, there's high level of transparency here, obviously. So for those who want to contribute to this genuine effort, because as I said, this is there's no... Uh, profit money making in this specific venture that we do in fact it's something that as i said always we we <laughs> we save to make sure we can get this done every year if you want to know so we give thanks continually if you want to be a part of this initiative uh, as well you can contact us if you want to make a donation whether it be a prize well to be very honest at this time that is why for those who we reached out to we had a, 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 a cutoff point of the 20th of December. So at this time, the, the literal prize in your hand might be a little bit tricky um, with shipping and all of that, to be very honest, and time frame, because we want it in hand and we can speak about it. But um, if that can be done, uh, what's the word, expeditiously, of, of course, that'll be a, a ASP, ASAP as well or if it is a financial contribution as well, that could be done. All you have to do is contact us, priestisaac27 at gmail.com and say, Honorable Priest, we'd like to be a part of the essay competition and this is what we'd like to contribute towards it. All right, I'll be thankful. Asante Sana. Now, yes, as I said on the Shock of the Hour radio program, we I wanted to do a program uh, I'm going to do a program directly dealing with, you know, Haile Selassie and the nature of such. And why I, I highlighted this one here on the YouTube uh, as, uh, you know, has Haile Selassie ever lied or can he lie or whatever. And I know to some, when you see the title, it's already like blasphemy, you know, like, oh, even just to say that. Well, no, obviously, I, I would only say that. You know, I don't really bring topics just out of the wild you know, as if I'm trying to attract some sort of, you know, I mean, um, um, provocation or even a conversation. This is reality. You know, as Rastafari, I've heard people clearly say that Haile Selassie cannot speak the untruth then. Now, I would like to know if you notice i said speak the untruth i didn't even say lie in that case because lie sounds too harsh you know what i mean highly selassie cannot lie you know what I mean? how dare you even think about it okay all right fair enough now and believe me i can understand the feeling as it relates to that and um let me just say off the bat before i go before I go into the depths of it. And I've spoken of this before, not in the case of Haile Selassie, but in reality. To lie and to be dishonest is two different things, yo. To lie and to be dishonest. I mean, most lies, most, the vast majority of lies, 
lies come with this honesty. But if lie means not to tell the actual truth, if that's the definition of it, there are cases where an individual would lie and not be dishonest. I could give you a clear uh, situation with myself and I, I will go more in depth with that on the shock of the hour. They ain't got time for it now. Where I, if you want to say, I lied. And that's just, that's not too long ago. Like two, three years ago. And because of my so-called lie, if you want to call it that. I have a brethren right now that's still alive. That's still alive. I'm talking about guns in your face business. You hear me? Do you hear me? All right. So. I would like to take the opportunity here to highlight and show my appreciation for the brothers and sisters of um, the line of Judah society. There's something I wanted to read from the autobiography of Haile Selassie I. And in fact, I was actually going to read it for you. And I said, no, let us hear it live because this would be a good opportunity to highlight because you know a lot of people don't like to read and the brothers and sisters from the line of Judah um, society have actually taken the time to to create, if you want to say, an audio book of uh, my life and Ethiopia progress, which is the autobiography part one and two of Emperor Haile Selassie the first. You know, so I'm going to just run a piece of it here, and in this section of the book. Haile Selassie, this is Haile Selassie's autobiography now. This is his words, you know, not somebody, you know, giving an impression of what they think he's saying. And in this now, Haile Selassie is explaining to us that this is uh, at the time when he was not even Ras yet. This is the time when Menelik was was ailing. Um, he was the Deshmach Tefari or the Deshmach Tefari and Empress Taito, Menelik's wife, basically was taking control of the administration of the government at the time. So there were those who were plotting because I mean I mean the court is full with a lot of this in a man. I mean you can't compare it to, 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 to British and French history, but yet still within the courts they have those who are plotting to take over. So they had those who were conspiring you know what I mean? To kind of pull out the plug from Menelik maybe before the time. And whatever the case is, they're not going along with the plan. And they know that the Deshmark Tafari, Rastafari, Emperor Haile Selassie I, but at the time, you know, that was his position, the Deshmark, as a, as a young upcoming youth, you know. And, and they called him in. They said, yo, you come, man. We don't know you powerful, you know. This is what we're going to do. You know what I mean? We're going to take down this and do this. And by the time they wake up, we have the whole country. You're with us or not? And the, the emperor at the time, you know, the Deshmarsh said, you know, he's not with that. And do you know, even though he did not partake of the plot, yet still there was, certain, there was a certain level of discipline that he carried that he didn't go out and say, hey, you know, them fellas up there plotting to, 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 to the point now that Empress Z uh, Taito, Buck up the king, uh, the Deshmash, Tefari at the time. And she already knew, she already heard that that there were those plotting. And she, she heard that they asked the young, the Deshmash, Tefari, to be a part of it. And he said, no man, he not in that. And she approached him and said, hey man, you hear about this little plot, something going on. And so and the king said, well, no, he don't really know about none of that. You know. And she now said, I know everything, you know. She actually said, I know the truth. Let's listen to the audio. Participation in my joy, they declared. We trust that you will govern Harar. After giving orders to my chiefs in each district that they should carry out their work diligently and that they should guard the country meticulously. 
<clears throat> Since the Emperor Manulik was gravely ill, he no longer had the strength to undertake any major work except to appear before the army by coming out into the palace square. Consequently, all the people, great and small alike, felt very grieved. As to all the work of government, it was Empress Taitu who took it on as plenipotentiary. For this reason, as peace became disturbed, many people appeared in the palace precinct in devouring to stir up agitation. As all this was going on, and while Empress Taitu, acting as plenipotentiary, was carrying out all the work of government, envious men began a conspiracy against her. Listen, listen. To deprive her of her powers and to evict her from the palace. When they asked me to join them in the conspiracy, I told them that I did not wish to enter into their plot, and consequently all the, all the conspirators began to look upon me with enmity. When Empress Taitu heard about my refusal to enter into the conspiracy, she told the Emperor, and both were very pleased. Yeah, that... Although the Emperor was gravely ill, at that time his mind was still balanced. Nevertheless, he did not find an appropriate occasion to warn and to reproach the conspirators. As to my refusal to join the conspiracy, I did not tell either the Empress or anyone else about it. But those good. conspirators let out the secret, saying that just much the Fede refused when we said to him, join the conspiracy. When the Empress repeatedly asked me in order to find out about this matter with certainty, I was firm in my statement that there was no one who had asked me to join the conspiracy. Therefore, she declared that she was very pleased about my not letting out the secret and told me, I know the truth. Your refusal to let out the secret is because you are a very discreet man. Since Empress Taitu had heard it be reported that it was in the ministerial council chamber that this matter of the conspiracy had been started, she foiled their plot for the time being by causing the ministerial... Okay, no, this, that's the main vibes for the moment. As I said... Haile Selassie clearly showed you that, listen, man, these fellas came to me. They wanted me to be a part of the plot, just as I said. And I said, no, I can't be a part of the plot. Now, Empress Taitu heard of it, and she told King Menelik, and they were joyous. They said, yeah, man, that young Tefari, that's the man there, man, he's dignified, X, Y, Z. And when she went to him, and she talking about the vibe, she he like, well, no, man, I don't. And she actually said, well, I know the truth. With respect, I know the truth. So even even if she knows that he ain't telling me the truth, you know. Is she wasn't saying it like, oh, that liar. He can lie. And no, she was saying, he's not being truthful. He's not being truthful. I know the truth. He's a real upstanding young man. For not telling the truth. That's what she said, and she respect him for that. But of course, you know, as I said now, the reason why I brought that up is because sometimes we talk, we are quick to say, you know, man, Haile Selassie can't lie, Haile Selassie can't this and that. And, but what I'm saying now, even if you want to consider that, because, I mean, clearly, it's only because most of us, we are so dogmatic, we can't even say it like well you know it like it can't come out of our mouth when if you read the passage remember you know it's not a story reading about the emperor you know? it's the emperor himself telling you the story and he tell you what he knew and what he refused to say and what the empress tell him that she know the truth so he can't fool her I mean, it's real. And the main reason why, you know, I do these little programs is for us to get the spookiness out of our mind as it relates to the Almighty, the Most High God and the Divine. Too spooky. Because remember, we most of us, we're coming out of a, a serious soak-up of Christian dominion. So all of a sudden, you know what I mean? He's God, he can't lie. God, he can't dead. God, he can't do that. Oh, you have, you have children, he came out of a woman. You have a daddy, can't be God. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> a lot of, I mean, fairy tales are the mentality that goes with it. And even as Rastafari, 
But some of us, we, we, we guilty of that sort of mentality. Man, we tell you how this last never cut his hair. It's just some sort of miracle why the hair never grow. I mean, I mean, like, wow. Trust me, I grow up around a lot of that, eh? And any time I notice that it's still raising its head, we got to beat it out. I mean, come on, you can't be teaching the next generation them kind of foolishness, you know what I mean? Put the reality to them and let us comprehend it. What I show you a while ago, don't take away nothing from the divinity of the king. This ain't Christianity. This ain't, oh, he told a lie. Take it off. That means he can't be. And No, nah, man, that ain't how it go. No, 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 no. I just clearly show you there's a difference between a lie and being dishonest. As I said, people break into your house, ready to kill everybody inside. And your mother or father or wife or husband or your little baby is in the room next door or in the next room. And they're saying, where is the little baby? Or where is your mommy? Or where is your old papa? And you're going to tell me you're not going to put on an act? I say, you came for my father? Yeah, where is he? Oh, heaven help us. I'm so glad you came. That man is such a wicked man. Where is he? No, hold on, man. He beats me every night. I know he's my papa, but somebody got to teach him a lesson. Where is he? He just took the horse and he went over the hill over there. That's a lie. You just lied. And he runs over the hill and he said, Papa, he's gone. Run in the next direction. But you just lie. In the Harriet Tubman story, it is said that Harriet Tubman's father, uh, when she went and came back, already being a professional on the Underground Railroad, she came back for something. And before she took them away, her father had to meet her and give her some sort of provision. That I, I, it may have been bread or something. And he blindfolded himself to go and meet her in the dark so that when the master asked him, did you see Harriet last night? He could honestly say, no, master, I didn't see her. That's why he blindfolded himself. Wow. I mean, and that is because of his Christian nature that they beat into us. That's just the truth, man. Man, I ain't going to tell nobody to go lie. I mean, I don't lie. Me personally, I don't lie. I don't lie. But at the beginning of the program, I tell you already, I gave you a situation where I told someone if you want to soften it up, the untruth. And again, and again, because of that, I could go and leave here and go and visit my brethren a few miles ago uh miles away pardon me and look in his eye and burn a chalice with him because i lied to a masked man with a gun in his hand that would have killed anybody else he found yeah so check yourself but anyway as i said the shock of the hour those of you who are not a part of the subscription team of the shock of the hour i don't know what you're doing Remember, the Shock of the Hour is a program that comes to you each and every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. As I said, of course, if you're not as part of the subscription team, all you have to do is email us, Priest Isaac, P-R-I-E-S-T, 27, or Priest Isaac, P-R-I-E-S-T-I-S-A-A-C, 27, at gmail.com. And, of course, we give you all the information as, as it relates to becoming a part of the subscription team. And, of course, again, we have monthly subscriptions. We have six-month subscription where you definitely save more. And, of course, the yearly subscription as well. The Shock of the Hour radio program, of course. And, again, remember, for those who would like to, you know, uh, make a contribution towards the essay competition. Again, as I clearly said, for, for those who contribute, um, unless you are the one that would request that we don't, we definitely let the world know you have contributed and how much you have given towards the effort and full transparency. That's just, just for your clarity. And as I said, the essay competition, really, February is really the month where everyone should be putting their self together. We have already begun the campaign. We have already begun the media work, advertising, 
Um, so many things really go into it, uh, not just the gifts, eh? a lot goes into it well, that needs the financial aspect uh, to just uh, make sure it goes and it's definitely for the upliftment. I mean, I mean, around here, man, there's nothing about no Africa, nowhere around here for these youths, the man. So trust me, this is something we delight in doing and look forward to do each and every year. So you want to contribute and be a part of it, precise that again, 27 at gmail.com and we definitely um, hook you up on that level. Yeah, you could definitely follow us on Instagram as well at this hour, Priest Isaac on Instagram, Priest Isaac 27 Yes, the shock of the hour. I'll be looking forward to meeting you within the realms of that this evening. Holy Manuel I, Selassie I, Ja Rastafari. Blessed love, Kriptar.